Okay, guys, Jesse's FG Falcon is finally done. Well, done on the dyno, or the hub dyno, I should say. So get ready, this is a long video. If you're a barra nutter, you love barras, you're gonna stick around. If you don't like barras, probably time to flick off. But um, this is a pretty exciting build. Spent a lot of time tuning this car, building this car, a lot of backwards and forwards, a lot of revisions and so on. But the final product is done and I'm happy and I'm glad to share it with you. And it's an absolutely awesome build. Jesse has let us do it the way we want to do it um, with a few little revisions, you know, from himself. But, you know, most part of it, he let us do the whole job, which is awesome. So we got to build what we know works. And man, this is a banger combination. The best to date. Nothing's come close to it. So, but um, let's head into the car. Let's have a look at it and show you everything. So, so uh, FG Falcon and engine bay is absolutely smick as like check it out everything's all ceramic coated black satin um powder coat for the rocket cover powder coat on the pipes uh, so on so a bit about the build so as you can see but it's got the plasma man um batch of reload not really exciting that one but moving on to the exciting stuff so it's got the haltech um plug-in ecu it's got a G40, a proper Garrett G40 turbocharger with a V-band, uh, 1.19 rear housing. It's the 1150 version. Um, all the work is done by ourselves, all the custom work. Runs the Process West cooler, if you can sort of see it in there. I won't come to the front, but yeah, you can sort of see it. Um, all the fab work, as in the piping and all that stuff's done by us. Runs a GFB uh, 50 mil wastegate, which is tucked underneath that heat shield down in there. Just sort of see it just over in that corner. Um, and yeah, the heart is a obviously a barra, four litre barra. It's got a spool crank, I believe. Sorry, yes, it does. Uh, this is a spool crank. It's got the Nitto rods and pistons, um, Calford um, 218A camshafts, and our famous Blackwell CNC cylinder head. So yeah, absolutely awesome engine. Very basic in the grand scheme of things. Um, obviously, a bit of heat shielding there, as you can see. It's an important thing. Um, injectors are a 1650 uh, Boshi injector. And then you can see, that's my knock sensor stuff there that will come off shortly. But in each runner, there is a direct port uh, jet down in there, if you can sort of see it. And directly underneath the manifold, it's got the, um, the fab. Now the water methanol system on this car is from, um, from a Lando over at Cool Aqua. Um, not Cool Aqua. <laughs> Cool running, sorry, I'm thinking of a water company. Um, Orlando set it all up and it, it uses the Aquamist uh, system, but it runs a, a twin fav and the big pump in the back and it's got the 10 litre tank in the tank, and sorry, 10 litre tank in the back of the car. And this is a 98 octane car. No, met, no ethanol, no methanol, none of that sort of stuff. It's a straight 98 car uh, with water meth injection. So we run what we call a 80-20 mix. Um, so 80% water, uh, 20%, uh, sorry, 80% methanol, 20% water. Um, and that gives us the ability to be able to absolutely do whatever we want with it. This gives us the advantages of E85, but on 98 octane. And look, it's easy for us because we do it all the time and we use this water. We've been using it now for probably six or seven years now, and we've finally got a good handle on it. Um, and it works really well for us, but don't, don't be fooled. It's not easy. Like to just... If you think you can just slap it on there, like you want to make 350 kilowatts, 400 kilowatts, single jet, way you go, whatever, it'll work. But when you start talking the power levels we're at with this thing, like this is tapping 711 or 715 kilowatts at the hubs, 32 pound of boost um, on some of the runs, but I've left it at 30, um, a 98 octane, and it's having a holiday there. Like it's, mate, I'm, I'm watching everything. Like I've got the Nox running on the Haltech, I've got the Nox running on my external Plex, um we are monitoring everything because we get it wrong and we got the engine on the ground and that's the reality of it you don't get a second chance with water meth and 98 you get it wrong it's finished you're done it's like a rotor so but um yeah look really good thing it works exceptionally well we'll take you to the back i'll try and show you the tank we'll get the camera to turn around here it goes so all this all this stuff's in the boot apologies but that's the tank there. We do need to obviously finish off. Look, the boot's got his stuff in there. So, but that's, yeah, essentially, that's it there. Very easy to maintain and set it all up. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's a really, as you can see, like it's it's an absolutely beautiful looking combination. Um, very, very simple build and packs a punch. So it's got a ZF transmission um, behind it. I believe David RVO done the trans on this one that was already previously done before it came to us. Um, and then Rob over at Monster Talk, um, it's got one of his converters in it. So. We originally had this on the dyno and it was all done and I just, I felt like we could just do a little bit more with the converter and we sent that back over to Rob and Rob gave it a tickle up and man, put it back in and voila, you know, 680 kilowatts, 700, you know, from 680 to 711 or whatever it was. So yeah, really, really good thing. Rob's awesome. Like he works with all fast and those guys, they've got the combination and it works really good. So, you know, thanks to those guys for that. Um, inside the car, being a Haltech car, I'll get out of the way. So that's the keypad in there. Um, otherwise, all very basic inside. Um, but enough of that stuff. Let's talk about the dyno. So this is what this is what's got me excited. So this is the final result. Check that out. Um, that is so good. So 621 kilowatts, 871 newton meters of torque, and that's with a peak boost of 26 pound. But I'm gonna show you, when I say peak boost, let's go over here, this is the boost curve. So I'm ramping it in. Tuning a water meth car is a little bit different to E85. So it's only got 18 pound of boost through the middle. And then we start to feed the power in the top. We can do that with a big turbo. We can chase the torque curve. So, but if we go to boost group number two, 683 kilowatts, 959 newton meters of torque. And we just get the boost up just a little bit more. As you can see, we just go from 18 pound to say 21 is sort of pound, and then we finish off at around 29, 30 pound at the very end. But things start to get a bit serious when we start moving into boost groups three and four. Now three and four are very similar, as you can see, torque and power are quite close. But the big thing is, is when you look at the power line, you can see the way we ramp it in. So we're, we've got the power, so the 711 kilowatt, which is the green, We've got the torque ramping in very slowly, so we're trying not to blow the tire off. We're trying to use this as our, you know, street sort of, you know, tune. But then once you get some grippy tires on, we can move on to the blue line because that is absolutely going to blow the tire off. But the green line, we could probably hook that up out on the road with a little bit of torque reduction and all that sort of stuff in place. So um, although the power curves between the blue and the green are quite similar, they will have a very different feel on the road as to how it drives. So the blue line obviously got a lot more mid-range power into the top. But that's sort of it for the G40. You can see it's sort of done here. And this is 7,600 RPM. Um, so it's pretty much done. But yep, we can feed more power in the bottom. But I'm not going to feed more into it at this stage. Until Jesse tells me he can hook that up off the bottom, he's not getting any more power. So no point having power that you can't use. So, but yeah, that's, that's essentially the boost curve. Ignore this part here. I've had to just make a slight tweak at the end of this video. Um, I've just, just got a little bit of slight over boost for my target that I want. You know, I actually want it to be around 26 pound of boost here and then sort of come on and ramp up. But yeah, look, it's a little bit more, but it just goes to show that I can I can pull this up to 30 pound of boost quite easily. And that will, you know, take it from say, 1,070 uh, odd Newton meters of torque. That will probably take it up to 1,150 Newton meters of torque if I ramp that boost in early. So yeah, very, very impressive build. It has been an absolute massive build. We've spent a long time building this car. Um, as I said earlier, a lot of on and off the dyno. Like we've had it on and off the dyno several times now because the first time we got it on, we're like, no, nope, we didn't like this. I originally had it on there with a smaller rear housing. Um, and I could see that, you know, it was holding the back. Like I had a 0.9 something housing on it. Jesse really wanted that housing. So he didn't really want the G40, he wanted the G35. I wanted the G40. Um, so we kind of met halfway. I got the G40, he got the smaller rear housing. Um, but I was pretty confident in the end we could convince him. Um, and once we got tuning on it, we, 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 could tune, we could show him that, hang on a minute, the 0.9 housing actually is hurting it. Um, the G40 is a very capable turbo. It will spin that, no worries. So he was, worried, he was concerned about losing bottom end power and all that stuff. Not a hope with his turbo. Um, with the right manifold and all the good combination, um, you're not going to move. You're not going to miss out any bottom end power. You can feed it in straight away, especially if you've got a good engine and you can afford to really ramp it in. So, but yeah, good thing. It's got a six-piece manifold. I forgot to mention that earlier. Earlier, uh, V-band obviously, um, and then it's got the DSR performance. Um, you know, rear, uh, pretty much we call it a cat back, but it's got their rear four-inch stainless system through their mufflers and out the back. So it sounds absolutely awesome. 
Um, all in all, this combination is just a banger combination. And don't forget, guys, it's 98 octane. So, yeah, 700 kilowatts, 98 octane. 100% streetcar, this thing can drive around, fill up at the Bowser, and you won't really use that much water meth because you won't be able to put that much power down in the street anyway. Um, and mixing 10 litres of methanol, you know, water is, is very easy to do. A lot easier to find E85 these days. So, um, but yeah, but this is pretty much sums up Jesse's build, like an absolute awesome build. Big credit to him. Thank you for letting us do our thing. Thanks for letting us do it in our time frame because these sort of jobs don't build themselves overnight. And most importantly, they don't build themselves with a $2 budget. So thanks, Jesse, for giving us the budget to work with. So um, all in all, it's a, it's a team effort. You know, everybody, all the workshops, everyone we work with, and Jesse and everybody, like everybody involved makes, makes this sort of thing happen. So, you know, is it record breaking? No, it's not. Um, but is it a massive achievement for us? Yes, it is, because we haven't made this sort of power in 98 octane and water meth before. So this is a bit of a groundbreaking one for us has always been uncharted territory from 600 kilowatts onwards so it's um yeah really good build so i'm happy happy it's all come together and yeah got a couple more little tweaks to do and yeah finalize the road side of things and yeah, it's ready to give it back to him so yeah absolutely stoked with it guys thanks for watching tell us what you think in the comments if you got a car and you're running on e85 and you kind of can't get it anymore which is being a common problem here in australia especially in victoria um, you know, don't don't be concerned. You can actually you can actually make that same power if you if you put a proper water methanol system on there. You can actually do it. Is it expensive? Yes, it is. Um, but it's a one-off payment. Once you've done it, you don't look back. And let's face it, guys, working on cars. Who said they were an investment? Uh, Mum and dad. They always told you, don't waste your money on cars. They are a toilet. Um, and they're damn right about that. But you know what? We love it. We love what we do, and we don't really care what money we spend on them because it's 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 just it's just a great feeling to be able to build something cool like this and. Yeah, it's nice to have these sort of things in the backyard and, you know, in your shed as well too. So it's all about enjoying yourself, I guess. So, but um, but yeah, look, if you can't get E85, give us a call, guys. We can set you up with a water meth combo and, yeah, get you, all, get you all up and running. So, but anyway, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. More to come. Catch you later.